Last month was the fifth driest September on record for Illinois, Missouri, and Michigan, but precipitation was above average here in Nebraska. Coupled with rainfall in the first half of October, that's led most of the state to favorable conditions in the latest U.S. Drought Monitor. Only 2.5% of Nebraska is in moderate drought, the least in more than three months. That had delayed harvest, but it could have benefited still growing crops. Earlier this week, we talked with Nebraska Extension Forage Specialist Bruce Anderson about guidelines for grazing or cutting alfalfa in October. We started by asking what this growing season had been like for alfalfa in the state. Well, I think it really depends a little bit on where you are geographically always. Uh, uh, I think we've had a pretty good season overall. We've had good moisture over much of the area, although there always are some dry spots out there. And of course, uh, with good moisture, sometimes comes rain damage and challenges getting the crop harvested. Uh, but also there have been uh, lengthy enough periods for a lot of our growers to get their hay crop up in decent shape. So I think uh, all in all, we're in, in pretty decent shape. Uh, uh, we'd always like to have a little bit more high quality alfalfa than, than we may have right now. Uh, but I think the overall supply is going to be fairly adequate for the year. Update me on where the growth stage is. Well, right now, of course, we're, we're into October. We're getting to the very near end of the year. Some places, uh, the alfalfa may actually have finished uh, growing uh, with some real cold temperatures. Uh, but we're at the time of the year when we're making some decisions as to, okay, how are we going to finish up with what's left standing out here in the field? And uh, those are some of the, the, the last decisions we have to make uh, during the alfalfa growing season. And what are some of those options? Well, when we take a look at uh, fields that still have quite a bit of standing alfalfa out there, we certainly have all of the harvest options available to us. We, we could be cutting it for hay, or we could be chopping it as silage. We could be grazing it. Uh, I think we have to take a look at which option fits our operation the best. Uh, what is our need for that alfalfa? You know, do we really need to go through uh, the expense and effort of getting it harvested? And really consider what the environmental conditions are like uh, that may either hinder or, or benefit us in terms of the harvest at this time. Give me some guidelines for either safely grazing or maximizing and making sure you get good quality production. Okay, well, let's start with the grazing. You know, the, of course, probably the two things that we worry about with grazing is first off, bloat and wanting to avoid that with the livestock. Uh, and the second thing is just doing damage to the alfalfa. Uh, the latter one is pretty easy to kind of uh, uh, overcome as long as we have a good firm footing so that the animal's hooves are not going to be tearing things up, uh, we probably aren't going to do a lot of damage to the alfalfa. The bloat is a little bit uh, more challenging of a situation to deal with. You know, when we have real green lush alfalfa out there, that can be pretty risky for, for grazing and we have to go through quite a few uh, exercises to minimize that risk out there. But one thing that can work in our favor this time of year is that as soon as we start getting some real cold temperatures, and I don't really know what real cold definitely defines as. It may, uh, it may be 28 degrees, probably more likely 20 degrees, where we definitely see that alfalfa starting to wilt in the field. Uh, then after that wilting has occurred, uh, for a couple days, the bloat risk is a little higher. But if we wait for about a week after that real, real hard freeze has occurred, uh, the bloat risk can go down quite a bit and we might be able to graze that alfalfa a lot more safely and get a lot of good feed quality out of it. And thoughts on cutting? Well, cutting kind of follows some of those same types of guidelines. This is usually the type of time of year when we have our very highest quality alfalfa. If we're looking for something that's a real premium horse hay or dairy quality hay, uh, the cutting that can occur in October oftentimes can give us that type of alfalfa, but it's a very slow time for hay to dry, uh, and so it presents some special challenges to us that way. Uh, also, we might want to look at the temperature. You know, I like to tell people that if you're looking at an October hay harvest, uh, we may not need to really worry about that temperature and whether the alfalfa is going dormant or not if we've had at least six weeks of growth since the previous cutting. Uh, but if we're a little bit tighter than that, then we may want to wait until we get that real hard freeze that causes the alfalfa to really go dormant. And then that's the same kind of temperatures that we were looking at for grazing. We want to see the alfalfa actually signal to us that uh, it's been damaged by the cold temperatures, it's wilting, it's starting to dry down. Uh, the thermometer, 
may be our friend, it may be our enemy. You look at the temperature and you think it's going to be doing one thing, but uh, the plant may tell us that it's doing something else. Mm -hmm.